right, first and foremost, to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. We do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Uh, in Numbers 15 38, how it talks about putting uh, fringe on the border of our garment. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I was under the assumption that a garment is like a, a robe, like, mm -hmm. thing, you know. So how do like we the garments we wear at camp, you mean? Con, mm -hmm. yeah, like apparel. Con, con. Okay, so okay. How would we then uh, prove that a, a garment isn't exclusive to like a long robe, but it's okay, also okay. Like Somebody give me give me um numbers fifteen to thirty eight, and pull it up in the Hebrew. Pull up the Hebrew on it because it, it it's just a matter of just like uh Deuteronomy twenty two and five right through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemiah was shy. The understanding of that was corrected. That it means a woman should not wear that which pertained to a warrior. A woman should not wear a warrior's oh, wait, garment. Deborah went to war. <laughs> That's a type of crazy. Deborah at war. I can you can I can show me Deborah singing and then men going to war. I didn't know she was singing with you know a camouflage suit on. <laughs> you know, Zena warrior princess. But um, you know, when you go into the Hebrew because. Like people are so insane. If somebody tried to say you're gonna go into another language to try to justify women wearing pants. Number one, nobody's trying to justify anything. I'm just trying to read what it was written in and see what the most high told our ancestors to write down. You understand what I'm saying? Contrary to popular belief, King James translation is not flawless. If you want to prove that, it say Easter in it. You know you're not supposed to celebrate Easter, don't you? You see what I'm saying? So it's not it's good and it's the best one that's out there. Yeah, he was as far as translating from into English, because we speak English with the King James Version and everything. You you want me to prove the King James Version isn't everything? Version do the tribe of Zebulon read. It's, you see that? That King James had nothing to do with that. <laughs> right? So there are different translations of the Bible. There's a Spanish one. There's a Haitian Creole. We got our own Bible. That's not the King James Version. So the King James Version is not and cannot be the end-all, be-all. Why? Tribes and all the people of the world don't speak it. So that don't even make sense. But for those of us that are speaking English, the best English translation that exists is the King James Version. So that's what we go off of. Does it have its flaws? Of course it does. You see what I'm saying? Again, it, Easter's in there. Right. Um, um, they, they call uh, uh, Moses' son, the son of Manasseh, as a son of Moses on purpose. Put misidentified somebody that goes back to the um, the Masoretes because they didn't want one of Moses' sons being. They didn't want to, to let people know that one of Moses' kids was wicked, but plenty of righteous men had wicked kids in the Bible. It happened all the time. Right, Absalom. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So we have this, but the the importance is we have to take a look at the Hebrew to get a. This is this is what's ill about the term etymology. Etymology means the study of truth or or the true sense. We need to get the true sense of what is being spoken about in order to know what's going on. If we're not doing that, you know who we are. We're the Christian Church. If we're not doing that, you see what I'm saying? So let's get. Give me numbers fifteen and thirty eight. Read it in the English and then hit garments in the Hebrew. The English version. Book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and bid them. Are we the children of Israel? Yes, we are. They say, and do what? Bid them, read on. That they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. It says, bid them, tell them to make fringes in the borders of their garments, read on. Throughout their generations. Throughout the meaning forever, we're supposed to do this. It says, bid them that they make fringes, right? On the borders of their garments. Give me the word for garments. Let's see what garments mean. If it's just a Hebrew garment. You know, that's the question because this is what certain people are propagating. Let's see if that's biblically sound, Hebraically sound in the spirit or not. Yeah, it's no, it's new. They just changed it. So long. Yeah, just click the number right here. Yeah, right. Boom. That's it. All right. So click right there. Like it. Okay, they just changed it. Okay. So it's Strong's H eight nine eight, which is but God, but God, 
and it says clothing. Did it say a Hebrew garment? Did it say warlike apparel? It say clothing. Clothing, right? I mean, I go to a clothing store in order to buy the, the, the shirt. To don't, don't I? Right? So it say on your clothing. It didn't specify the type of clothing. I'm going to tell you how, how much nonsense that is. They put a woman put a fringes on a dress, right? On a skirt? With a dress and a skirt. Is that a Hebrew garment? A dress and a skirt, brother. These niggas are crazy, man. Bizarre. Oh, they sell. Uh, they sell. They sell. They, well, yeah. I go to the garment district, and I could get different clothes. Clothing. A garment is clothing. People go to the term Hebrew garment and just think, "Oh, that's a garment." Your 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 pants are a garment. Your shirt is a garment. You see what I'm saying? You ever heard of the term undergarments before? All right. Do you do you only wear drawers under a Hebrew garment, or do you wear drawers every day? I would hope. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so maybe they don't have that understanding, I, you know, because they free ball by our car. <laughs> no, that can come. It comes from an underrighteous spirit because they're trying to circumnavigate a law. It applies to my Hebrew garment. You see what I'm saying? Which it doesn't only apply to your Hebrew garment. It applies to your clothing. Put fringes on your clothing to the best of your abilities. You see what I'm saying? That's it. Guys trying to circumvent that or trying to spite. A lot of, a lot of some people may be doing it out of spite because the people, the, the group of people that you attribute to the pioneering of, you know, that or, or bringing that. Because we everybody got to understand you have various Israelite groups that exist. Certain Israelite groups, through the Spirit, the Most High gave them revelation on something or put a spirit on them to, to magnify something that gets out amongst the nations, right? So in doing so, if you have some resentment or some grudge against the group that did that, you then may be adamantly against it, just predicated upon the grudge or the, the, the resentment that you have against those people and right. you should never do that because right. if they're right they're right you see what i'm saying like you had a lot of people with this roof issue that came up people trying to make ruth the israelite right the brothers from true nation they brought out how uh, now we was on the fence about it really it didn't really matter but the brothers from true nation through the spirit and power of yahweh by shimei was shy did a magnificent breakdown proving ruth was a moabite was a heathen was not an israelite right now they did that and it gave the breakdown that gave us understanding on it. So we had the proper breakdown through the spirit on it. Now, we could have easily got proud and acted like them niggas ain't teach us nothing. And we came up with this on our own or attacked them and said, nah, the hell with that. Them niggas don't know what they're talking about based off of some type of personal ego trip. But that's off. If somebody bringing out, I don't care who they is. Like I had that issue with Tahar. We went in on him over the comments he made about a man, a, a uncle could deal with his niece. Then when I went to see him in New York, he gave me the example of it. And I had to bear witness to it. And then I even went and double checked and verified. And it was in fact right and exact. Because guess who else was a guess guess who else was a product of a, a auntie, not not an uncle and a niece, but an auntie and a nephew relationship. Does anybody know? The man named Moses who gave you the law. So if see that, Othaniel got with his niece and Amram got with his auntie, which produced Moses. There's two examples of that relationship happening. Either way, I know it's very strange to us, right? But plenty of brothers well, got with their cousins. We could go to uh, Moses and his sons and, and their wives. Yeah, come on. Right. Giving them to each other to repopulate. Yeah, all, all, the, all, the, all the cousins. You see what I'm saying? That's not something that's of common practice or, you know, that I see brothers doing today, but the point is, it's it's not unlawful, technically. You see what I'm saying? That's all the point was. So he was able to tell me that, and I was able to say, you know what? You're right. I could have easily said, man, you a child molester. To hell with you. I could have easily said that. But no, because he said, because that he said, he said, hey, you got on me about that niece thing, but look. And I said, all right. Y'all watch the video. I said, give me the breakdown. And if it was BS, I would come on, I he said, Othaniel. And I, as soon as he said, Othaniel, I already knew what he was talking about. 
but it just wasn't in my mind. You see what I'm saying? I never thought about it in that aspect, but that's exactly what happened. An uncle got with his niece. You see what I'm saying? That happened. Then also brought to mind Amram, uh, Moses' father, that was a husband of his auntie. This happened in the Bible. So can we, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, that's that's just what it is. It don't matter who's bringing it out. Right is right. One okay. second, Saad, a bio record. So It doesn't say an aunt can't mess with a nephew. That's the point. It, it qualifies who near kinsmen are. Near kinsmen are your mother, your sister. You understand what I'm saying? Your daughter. That's your near kinsman. Your cousin and your auntie. Now, you're with, lying. Yeah, so lucky. Go ahead. Your line. Your line. Directly related to your line. In the NIV, would it say honor and nephew or something like that? Maybe. 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 No, it, it no, it it says you can't have sex with your uncle's wife for she is yeah, thine yeah. aunt. Yeah, because she's joined to your uncle. That's somebody's wife. You can't have sex with her. You can't have sex with her anyway. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Hey, I think that's, yeah, that's hey, where the confusion Mo comes in. Moses, Moses was was making sure you understand she was not a communal woman. All right. Why? Why did he have to do that? Who knows why Moses had to emphasize why women that were married to members of your family. We're not, it wasn't all good for the cookout. The homies couldn't have none. Y'all got to know y'all history, man. Wait, wait, wait. Because wait, wait, Reuben wait, wait, fucked wait, wait, his daddy's woman. That's why. I was, I was, I thought you were going to say, I'm, I wanted you to repeat the question. I didn't understand it. Reuben dealt with his daddy's woman. So here Moses is re implementing to you don't deal with your family members when don't, of course, he told you don't commit adultery at all. You see what I'm saying? But you see what Reuben did. Now he don't excel. They down there in the damn. Swamps about. I was in South, South Florida. I saw no Reubenites. All right. Meaning what? They're somewhere in a damn swamp. All right. And, and they some of them in Mexico. You got Vocab Malone talking about how are the Seminoles or the Reubenites when there's only but so many of them. Nigga, and you know how many of them went to Mexico, you idiot? Do you do studies? How many is in Oklahoma? How many is in Texas? How many have mingled in with black people and are no longer a part of tribal registry? The white man created a false lie system called the native american blood quantum so don't tell me about how many registered members there are of the seminal nation i know seminoles recall from gms his father is seminal and they didn't want to give him the son of a seminal indian tribal membership but he ended up getting it yeah, imagine how many people that happened to uh, how many undocumented israelites are in the states boom you know what i'm talking about how many niggas missed the census <laughs> you see understand what I'm saying? And, and and the whole purpose of getting somebody on the registry is to get paid. You know how hard the white man will make it to pay your ass mm -hmm. if he could? Yeah. Officer. They call him the census bureau. The census bureau. This is census bureau. <laughs> hey, hey, what do the brothers say? I ain't even here. What does that mean? A lot of brothers missed the damn registry. 